I'm coming out of the cornfield, guys. Sometimes I just go in there and just hang out. But I wanted to talk to you today about how the systems here at the homestead have been doing. We've talked a lot about how the garden's been doing, but you know, if you remember, we've put in gray water, we've put in rainwater capture, we've put in solar and a couple other things. And I wanted to talk to those of you who are interested in those types of systems in your home, some of the mistakes that I made, maybe where I spent too much money, too little money, didn't invest correctly, didn't sequence the projects right. So in this video, let's walk around and just troubleshoot exactly what I would and wouldn't do again. Kicking it off here in the pond, which by the way, is really taking on a life of its own. The rainwater collection system is the pride and joy. That's the 5,000 gallon cistern, which is coming off of the roof right here, coming over the capture system. And there's a couple other rainwater tanks on the property. So, you know, I really have to say, I could have done my initial setup here a little bit better. This design here went through multiple iterations before we got to this, which I think is a decent system. So you, you have your leaf filter, right? You have your first flush filter right here, and then you have the actual capture system, which comes all the way down and runs over there. Chickens are going crazy right now. But what I'll say about this is, as far as water capture, gray water is gonna be your better option than rainwater if you're looking at it at a cost per gallon rate. It's simply less effective to capture rainwater because of the way you have to expend money on storing it all. Now, that being said, it's sometimes not all about the per dollar cost. Sometimes it's about the peace of mind. It's about knowing if there's a shortage. I've got 5,750 gallons plus more actually in the pond here at my disposal that I can use to water the garden or I can purify and use in my home if I want to. But if you're starting out, let's check out the gray water and I'll show you why that's a better choice. So here it is. This is the laundry water line and laundry actually has a pump. This has a pump itself, so you don't need to add anything. And then what you've got is drop out to the sewer here. So if I put it this way, it's gonna shut off this valve, which is where it's going out to the artichoke patch. And it's gonna just route it back out to the sewer line. If I turn it this way, it's gonna go ahead and go down here, goes down through the floor and out to the front. Laundry gray water for an aspiring homesteader or someone trying to be more self-sufficient is probably the best bang for your buck you're gonna get for reusing water. Number one, it's not a big life change. You have to change a couple detergents and soaps that you use. We have a whole gray water FAQs video we did. Number two, most cities have some sort of rebate program where you can actually get money back up to even the full price of the install. And then number three, if you want to do it yourself, it's actually not that challenging of an install to do. I'm here in the bathroom now because those of you that remember, remember we went a little crazy with the gray water install and I also installed a shower gray water system in which we have a toggle, like a little flip switch, that will actuate a turning mechanism below the house and it will either turn and block off the sewer line, allowing it to go out to the orchard, or it will block off the orchard line, allowing it to go out to the sewer. It kind of depends, like if you're using some products in the shower you really don't want in the orchard, then of course you would throw it to sewer. I thought this was really good because I was like, you know what, I probably use more water in the shower than I do in the laundry machine for sure, so I might as well spare the extra expense and go ahead and do that. Well, I have to be honest, the shower is really small. It is hard for me personally to be in. I'm a pretty tall guy. So I went ahead and designed an outdoor shower system that I've been using a little bit more often. I'll show it to you right now, but this one also goes out to the orchard and it outputs a little bit more water through this rainfall shower head. I think for most people going in with gray water, again, I went a little overboard with the shower system. I don't think it's a bad idea. In fact, I think most homes should just be plumbed this way by a matter of course. It's not a lot of extra expense. And I think as we see resources potentially get more scarce in certain geographies, you're probably gonna want a system like that. So I'm not poo-pooing the shower, but I will say for my particular use, I'm out here way more often and it's coming right down in that drain right there and going out to the orchard still. So a good use of time and a good use of money for me. Long story short, gray water, great starter, laundry even better, go a little crazy if you want to, then get into rainwater if you really feel like it's an expense that's worth spending. Now let's talk about solar. So those of you who remember, I have a 14 panel system that I later upgraded with another 10 panels. So I have, I might've done more. I think I'm either 24 or 26. Needless to say, there's a lot of panels up on the roof here at the Epic Homestead. And I've done a few videos on updates from just a pure cost perspective. Long story short, it's probably gonna pay itself off in about 5.5 to 6.5 years, which is very aggressive. And the reasons for that is I got a pretty good deal on the system. I also have a 22% credit against that expense that came through the California 
government. They basically just gave a rebate against any solar that people put in. So that was a good boon. I took advantage of it the second that it really came into play. And I'm generating 1.4 megawatts of energy every single month, at least during the summer, 1.4 to 1.5, which is like far above what I actually use. So you have to think about what your area is rich in. California, specifically San Diego, is rich in sunlight. We almost never have rain here, and that's our weakness. We almost never have rain here. So I wanted to shore up my weakness with the gray water system and the rainwater capture, and then take advantage of my strength by completely wiping my energy bill to zero and netting a positive return after just five or six years of living here, really for the foreseeable life of me being at this property, 20, 25, 30 plus years. It's gonna be really, really nice. And what's great is I can use guilt-free effectively up to the amount I generate every month because I don't really gain anything besides accruing a negative credit. So you don't get paid for what you generate in excess of what you use. So for me, that means I have a little more leeway here in the garden to use some automated timers, to maybe automate some certain, certain things about the chicken coop or the irrigation, or run my mini split air conditioning a little bit more often, be a little more comfortable. That's sort of the point of what I'm trying to do here. It's not all about slogging through and just kind of suffering your way through this, this homestead mission or this homestead journey. I'm trying to add as much of modern technology and modern life that makes sense while not losing the fact that we should know where our food comes from and ideally produce a significant chunk of it ourselves. Those are the three major systems, the water system and the energy system. Other things I would say are if you're going to do a project, do it right the first time and consult with the best person in your area you can find. And oftentimes with contracted jobs like this, best often means they show up when they're supposed to show up and they do quality work and they communicate well. They don't have to go above and beyond. You just wanna find someone that you trust because look, if something goes wrong with the tank or if something goes wrong with the gray water system or all that solar up on the roof there, you better believe I know the people that I hired to do the work are actually going to come back and fix it instead of just absolutely vanishing. So I'd say that, and I'd also say prioritize. You know, all, we all have our own budgets that we're working with. You wanna do something that makes the most sense in the moment, most bang for your buck. That for me was putting, let's say, the shed system in first. I needed a place to store my tools. It enabled me to do the rest of this garden in a much more efficient manner. You'll notice that things like my compost system, that came in pretty late, guys. I mean, I'm actually a little embarrassed at, at how long it took me to get a compost system in, but simply it was a lower return because I was doing a lot making my own compost in a simple pile for the time being. And then now that it's fall, you're gonna see an episode here pretty soon. We need this bin to put a lot of material in to get it ready for the spring season. So you just gotta prioritize and you gotta pick and choose your spots where you're gonna invest your money. And over time, you will build a homestead that you're really proud of. So I hope this was helpful. I wanna do a couple more videos like this where I'm talking about how to think about it, how to prioritize, systemize, invest correctly in your systems. So if that's interesting, drop it down below what you wanna see next. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.